उपस्थित महाविद्यालय चम्पा चौधरी बैद महाविद्यालय भाइस प्रिन्सिपाल चम्पा चौधरी बैदेम मैम अपना माइक तो अफ आ चम्पा बैद हेलो सुना पासाने हेलो मैं कलेज टूडे प्रोग्राम webinar on nep 2020 the topic is nep and relevance of art education organized by the department of fine arts in collaboration with iqc i also welcome our research person dr moshami kondali assistant and professor department of cultural studies tejpur university i would also like to thank the organizer mr jyotirmoy bhuya head of the department of fine arts so all of you are very interested all of us are very interested in fine arts so i think that this webinar will help us in our future so i welcome you all on behalf of prajyotish college and i request our organizer to continue the program i am sure that all of you will be benefited by this today's program so thank you all of you and welcome again i welcome again our resource person dr kondali to give the speech so thank you all of you thank you ma'am मसिमाइल am i audible yes ma'am audible yeah yeah i hope everyone can listen okay yeah once again i wish you all a very very happy new year yes. and good morning and thank you for gathering here and also thank you uh, prakriti yes, college yes, and vice principal ma'am and choti uh, moy bhuya of finance department for inviting me for 
for giving me this opportunity. Um, so thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thanking you and wishing you a very happy new year. I begin my talk. So the topic that was given to me is about uh, new education policy 2020 and the relevance of art education. And what I gathered from Jyotir Moy that this is a series, a web series, which you have been organizing in and around various discipline. And uh, already there has been a great deliberation and discussion about it, uh, the new education policy, right? So since many a speaker have already, many speakers have already, you know, spoken about what is national education policy and has given you, you know, various aspects of it. Uh, I'll not go into detail of it. Like, it's a huge document covering almost 60 pages, huge, huge document. And it is a full deliberation of so many aspects that it won't be possible for me to discuss everything. So what I'll do, I'll begin with the basic concept, the vision, the mean salient features, and then somebody has raised their voice. Uh, hand, I can see. Any questions? Uh, I saw somebody raising voice, uh, the hand. Any question or any? Otherwise, I'll continue. No question, right? Okay. Or if you have any query, please do it later on. Uh, continue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sabaz Rahman, thank you for telling me this because I saw it and got a little distracted. Anyway, we can have discussion if needed at all later on. So yeah, as I was saying that I have heard that I learned that Prajutish College has already been organizing you know, talks around in and around new education policy. So I won't be giving and going to every detail of it. As such, it's not possible in one hour. So I briefly initiate the you know topic. Uh, discuss about the salient feature and then come to relevance of art education. And for that, this because it is a huge, you know, topic, I think it, uh, better I use a PPT, PowerPoint presentation, so that they can read and also understand besides listening to me, so that the points are clear. So I'll be presenting before you. Uh, you let me know whether it is my PPT is visible or not. So, okay. Can you... Uh, see the PPT? Is it visible, everyone? Is my PPT visible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Visible, visible ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. So, yeah. So, today, now, let us begin with the main discourse, which is about new education policy 2020 and relevance of art education. So before we start our discussion, let us remember one thing that it is a long, long process spanning over the decades. It began actually long back in the post-independence time when there were a lot of brainstorming around, you know, the issue of education, the idea of education that a free and liberal India should have. In 1961, there was a lot of discussion and a kind of com committee was formulated. But in 1964, uh, and also NCRT was formulated later on, a lot of section of, you know, educated and, uh, you know, literacy say that we do not have a concrete idea or policy or vision about education. And education is a substrate of society, isn't it? Without education, why we need education? It is not only for knowledge, it is also for the sustenance of socioeconomic and other, you know, political agency. So education is the backbone. We know it. It's a cliche. We don't have to repeat it. All of us we know. So unless we have a concrete, you know, idea and framework about, you know, education, we cannot move forward. That is why in 1968, Indira Gandhi government, if you look at it, this is the roadmap that we have traveled so far. It began concretely in 1968 and we are now in 2021, following and I'm trying to understand the 2020 national education policy. So 1968, it was initiated by Indira Gandhi government, which announces the first national policy on education. And it was based on the recommendation of the Education Commission. I'm not going in detail because that will be again a history lesson, which I do not want to do right now. But the next step was taken in just to remember the roadmap, 1986, when Rajiv Gandhi government launched a new education policy. And the most important feature of that was the adult education and empowerment of the minority. 
Then comes the 1992 modification of national education by P. V. Narasimha Rao government. Which added a common entrance examination for professional and technical program. These were the highlights. These were the landmarks. Then we had 2005 new education policy, which was introduced by Manmohan Singh government, which had a common minimum program. And then we came to 2016, the new education policy by Narendra Modi government, addressing the gender discrimination. creation of education tribunal and a common curriculum for science mathematics and english gender discrimination is an important point which was a important you know discourse and question in and around our socio political life then comes the 2017 new education plan with major changes which were scheduled and in 2020 the new education policy was formulated it was chaired by prime minister narendra modi approved by national education policy on july 29 and it was based on the prof national education policy of 2019 which i had mentioned and it was chaired by k kasturi rangan he was a former chairman of indian space research organization he submitted it to the ministry of human resource development and it covered four key areas adult education promoting indian language which personally i think i'm excited about and online education of course thanks to corona thanks to the covid pandemic situation we know what online education is all about we have come to that you know mode of education where everything has become a blended mode offline online and then make it happen part 4 which discusses the policies implementation so this is the crux now what do this nap as we call it 2020 focuses on it has five pillars which is affordability accessibility quality equity and accountability all of you are graduate students isn't it i don't need to tell you or define the meaning about what does this mean what is affordability because we know india is a huge country and it is a diverse group of people it has different classes high higher class with high you know uh, income and the lower subaltern class and the poor class who do not even can afford food on daily basis so the question is that education for all it has to be affordable for everyone not only with the high class people but also lower and below poverty line people so that was the first you know pillars the second is accessibility affordability you need to afford it financially then accessibility suppose even if you have the affordability part if you cannot access what is the point of having an education so they we have they have given stress on emphasis on accessibility that everyone should be able to access education because that is our right that is our right right to education and then quality of course everybody is supposed we are uh, accessing but what if not it is not up to standard it is not high quality education will it make us a global citizen will it make us a knowledgeable person is the quality is not maintained that is why important is given and then you have equity please remember equity is the most important point why because it talks about justice and fairness justice and fairness is very important equity and then accountability when it comes to accountability it is us who will be accountable for education and of course students also it's a mutual relationship so these are the four important pillar based on which you know and also these were you know influenced by various other initiation by united nations sustainable development goals of 2030s and other many many you know influential factors were there and that's how it was formulated and this is a citation which i have taken from indrajit bhattacharya it is available in digital learning network platform you can go in. one best thing about online education that we are talking now is everything is now available whatever i am discussing is available the original draft is available all of i request all of you to go through it read every section try to understand what is trying to train and say and what is the goal that has been set by 
2030 or 2040 that everything will be transformed after two decades. So let us try to understand. And then also it was, uh, you know, this citation is from Manish Kumar Jindal, CEO, National Accreditation Board of Education. So this is the citation from their book. Then I'm going to uh, tell you one thing before I elaborate more that my primary focus in this discussion, in this deliberation is about higher education. Because NEP, NEP 2020 covers everything from school education to higher education, but it is impossible for me to cover everything. And I don't think also it is essential at this point. So since it is a college and we are from university, so college and university, all of you are now in graduation. After that, you will be uh, joining post-graduation. So higher education, primary focus will be on higher education. So what exactly NEP tries to attempt or target in the realm of higher education. So these are the important points. Please try to understand that it will be holistic and multidisciplinary education in an undergraduate program with multiple exit options. And the bachelor degree could be three to four. They have also said that MPhil would be discontinued. PZ can be a one or two year. The National Testing Agency will conduct the entrance examination for admission to universities. This is very important. I'll go to the point multidisciplinary. That again is a lot of people have been talking about it for decades because it has, it has already been in circulation in practice in the Western universities. In India, it was not happening, but this SNAP, new education policy gives very, very, very serious emphasis on this part, multidisciplinary. And then establishment of academic bank of credit, transfer of credit. These are very nitty gritty things. These are technical things. I think it can be discussed in the college level or in the you know official level. All of you can discuss it with your you know uh, academic you know IQC will say or other you know agencies within your college. Here I'll not be elaborating on it because then I won't be having time to discuss on the relevance of art education. But these are important points that you need to register in your mind. And then setting up multidisciplinary education and research universities. This sounds very interesting, Meru's multidisciplinary education and research. I'll come to that, that what is multidisciplinary, I'll come to that. But before that, let me just read out or rephrase or just recapitulate this. And then establishment of National Research Foundation as an apex body, a strong to, to inculcate a strong research culture. Because one thing we need to remember that unless we have serious research, only parent learning will never help a country, never help a civilization, never help a human being in the individual level. Research is a very important part of higher education. So establishment of Higher Education Council of India to regulate higher education by preparing the same set of regulation, accreditation, and academic standard for private and public. This, again, is the equalizer. Because sometimes we have seen that the private has a different set of norms and public institutions have different set of norms. But what they are trying to you know, uh, understand or trying to do or regulate that by creating this Higher Education National of India H-E-C-I, they will try to set the same set of regulation, accreditation and academic standard. I think this is important because everyone cannot afford private universities. Public institutions like us, we have to give that equity, that affordability, which are the five pillars. And this can be done only by this equalizing forces or policies that we see. Then you have National Higher Education Regulatory Council, same which is a medical and legal education form. General education council. These are various councils that are formed and these again can be elaborated, which we do not want to do it here. But of course, NEC, National Accreditation Council for accreditation that all of us really know we have faced it. So these are some of the important features. And most important is that increasing gross en enrollment ratio for higher education. The current ratio is 26 is to three. So it, it, it aims at increasing it to 50% by 2035 and adding 3.5 crore seats in higher education. So these are some of the objectives, main objective, main feature, which are radical in nature compared to the you know, previous formulations. Now I'm coming to the salient feature, coming to the crux. 
this has been done, but why? What was the triggering, you know, rational? What was the thinking mind or vision behind all this? Why? What was the need? Since already there were, you know, uh, nation education policies. Actually, there is a kind of re urge of, you know, revivalist mode, a kind of revisiting, you know, re-understanding the historical significance of India as a country and also its, you know, standing as a civilization. So, two things actually have, uh, to my understanding, a lot of scholars are also saying it, and to what if I went through, to my own understanding, to within my own capacity, with what I could see that the triggering forces behind it is that this, this whole revivalistic understanding of our past, because if you know India is a very ancient civilization, and once India was known as a site of universities, famous universities, if you look at it, I have just put this in this slide, I have actually, you know, deliberately put this to visual images. One is of Nalanda University, the other is Takshashila. I'm not going to again discuss about it again, another, no, one or two hours can be spent on talking about these two prestigious, glorious university from our glorious past. Please Google it. Nowadays, it is very easy. And I'm, I'm addressing the students now. Easy. You can go to internet, go to proper website, not anything. I mean, any just you know, blogs or anything. Go to proper website and find out about the glorious past. The university to who were people across Southeast Asia, Asia, and also other parts of globe came and attended. So these were the glorious, you know, sites. We had a tradition of higher knowledge. We had a tradition of, you know, high learning centers and institutions, Takshashila, Nalanda, Shila, so many universities. It is said that when the uh, uni library of the university, Takshashila was born, it, it took six months to burn down the library. So that kind of glory, then, then then we had disconnect. After a certain period, there was a disconnect. So there are a lot of brainstorming and you know re understanding like what has happened, what happened from the historical perspective, that what happened that once it was a very glorious you know site of knowledge and universities, which is an epitome of highest learning. Then what has happened? Why there was this degradation or disconnect? What happened to the entire society? Can we rebuild it? Can we recreate it? If not, at least can we attempt, make an attempt? That is one part of it. The other part is that the drastic change and radical change that came post-global scenario and also recently in the last one or two decades, we can see that new, there is a total change in the, you know, entire group scenario in terms of communication, in terms of education. Everything has become digitalized. Artificial intelligence, AI, is the keyword now, buzzword. Everything has been, you know, uh, intrigued by artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is actually replacing human, you know, skill. So how to cope with that? This whole entire digitalization, everything which has gone, you know, digital, the post-cyber cultural manifestation that we are you know, encountering everyday life through our internet, through our cyber culture, through our mobile communication, entire life has changed. So we need to cope up with it. So in order to understand a kind of, you know, blending of the past and the contemporary requirements, the essential requirements, this uh, new education policy has been, you know, uh, reformulated. This reformulation happened because of this. I'm sure I have at least tried to make a little understanding about that. Then what is the vision of the policy? Okay, you have this rational, you're trying to reform it. But then what are the vision? The basic vision is an education system rooted in Indian ethos. That is very interesting. That contributes directly to transforming India. That is Bharat. Deliberately, the word Bharat has been used. It's sustainably equitable and vibrant knowledge society. So the aim is to make India, you know, global knowledge superpower. That is, of course, so the main key point here is the Indian ethos. Perhaps 
they are trying to or we are trying to you know uh, destabilize this whole over orientation towards the western you know western you know euro eurocentric understanding euro american centric understanding of the whole process the curriculum and pedagogy of our institution must develop a deep sense of respect towards the fundamental duties and constitutional values bonding with one's country and conscious awareness again it is an extension of the first thing that you need to understand the constitutional value the country the nation that is the stabilizing that is a unifying force so the curriculum and pedagogy has to reflect on that and then you have to instill a deep rooted pride in being indian not only in thought but also in spirit intellect indeed as well as to develop knowledge skill values and disposition that support responsible commitment to human rights sustainable development living and global wellbeing so this is truly good global citizen this sentence at one time you may have said that these are are these you know big big you know bombastic formulation sometimes it happens but please remember one thing you know there are a lot of thoughts have been behind this framing of like our indian constitution so it talks about being a global citizen truly global citizen but at the same time it talks about being indian through thoughts and spirit i i find personally a, a, a resonance a counter resonance with macaulayan idea idea you know when macaulay in the british after british colonization when macaulay the british education policy was brought in by macaulay famous lord macaulay so many of us we are aware of his statement he said that in it was in uh, 30s of 1830s he said that we should make indian which are uh, by look by birth indian bad by you know uh, thinking by spirit there british so it is a reversal of that idea okay i so then the let us come to the fundamental principle of the policy so these are the fundamental what are the things please pay attention even if you some of you might find it too you know no word filled with word you know but these are important you know understanding we need to understand fundamental principle because we are a part we are stakeholder the first is recognizing identifying and fostering a unique capability of each student of course it is it comes to us as a facilitator of this educational process but also with everyone i mean it it is giving key emphasis on the holistic development in both academic and non academic sphere that is very important so each student is unique according to this principle you are not just a class you are also individual then according to the highest priority of achieving fundamental literacy by grade 3 that also comes to school education of course flexibility this is another point that learners means the students which are now listening to hopefully are listening to my deliberation that you have been given you know to fix your ability to choose the right to choose your own trajectory and program so that you can address your own talent own interest the new education policy feels that this was not given in the prior or previous you know formulations or you know policies the students they, of course it was given but they didn't have the you know enough you know uh, or to put it enough liberty to do that but now comparatively we have more room more space to you know think about your own interest and talent and interestingly you no know, hard separation between arts and science between curricular and extracurricular activity between vocational and academic stream that is another fundamental principle that why why it has been done it is very interesting because so far we are used to segregate you know the segregation of science and arts and curricular extracurricular activity curricular is the mainstream extracurricular is the side you know things that come along as a baggage and then you have vocational academic stream so these these are their conflicts but they try to eliminate this harmful hierarchy so they say that these are various areas of learning this is an interesting aspect and much needed now multidisciplinarity that i am uh, coming what is multidisciplinarity when you take multiple approach from different discipline to understand certain area of studies that is important suppose i want to talk about understand since you are student of uh, visual art 
Fine. Okay. Suppose I'm doing a research on the, you know, reflection of environmental aspects in the artwork of Assam, artists from Assam. Then I can take a multidisciplinary approach. How? I'll tell you. Instead of not only following the art historical approach, as I as a MA and PhD in art history, the first and foremost will be of course art historical approach, where I'll be looking at the language, the formalistic understanding, the historical backdrop. These are all about art history. But also, if I bring in aspects from psychological studies, from sociology, from psychology, from environmental studies, and other co-allied areas of interest, then my research will be multidisciplinary. Okay, I'll give another example. This is a recent one, and uh, this is from another university, of course. Rivagar University has opened up um, a new area of study called Brahmaputra studies. It came up in the newspaper, and also my friends over there have let me know, and it's, it's open in the public there. And what recently they have done, it, and in the Brahmaputra study, they will be discussing or understanding or you know, researching everything. It will, be, it will be from the historical point of view. It will be from geological point of view. It will be from the climate studies point of view. It will be from other literature and artistic point of view. So from all disciplines, making it a holistic approach, making it a multidisciplinary approach, we will holistically try to understand what Brahmaputra is all about how this as a lifeline is sustaining a land called Assam. So this is, I think, a very important and must be needed uh, aspect that has been taken into account in this new education policy. And then we have emphasis on conceptual understanding rather than rote learning. Now, what is rote learning? Adult learning. Learning for exam, isn't it? Yes or no? I would also love your, you know, your response. At certain point, sometime, I'm not generalizing it, our educational learning becomes rote learning, right? We just memorize everything and everything is aimed at exam. So new education policy is trying to break through that. There will be challenges, but yes, it. I think it is a good step because uh, parent learning, we do not understand things we learned no, after a certain period of time, it goes away. But the things you have learned through your own experimentation, your own understanding, your own critical analysis, it will remain till you die. If I go you and say that you go out and do a study of your own, then you will understand the landscape painting more instead of if I only tell you the long history of landscape painting in British you know, academic realism. You will read it. I'll give you one note. Take up this note, you'll just read it, you'll get high score mark, score very high marks, but after a certain point, you'll forget it. But if I take you up, show you the landscape of Assam, ask you to do it, and then compare it with the British, uh, you know, landscape painting, I am sure you as a student of fine art will remember it. You will also learn the process of comparing with your others, you know, school of landscape painting. Right? So that is what we are aiming at or new education policies aiming at. Is it still visible? Yeah. As I was saying, it is an extension of the previous, you know, take on creativity and critical thinking so that our logical decision making and innovation can take place. That again is very interesting. That is why I have actually made it bold. Then of course, another important point is ethics, moral study. So many times we feel that you know, education has become too much technical, that there is no room for ethics. But without ethics, can human beings survive? Ethics is an important branch of philosophy. It is about all moral conduct. So again and again, we need to, you know, reinsert these ideas, the respect for others, cleanliness, democratic spirit, service, spirit of service, respect for public property, scientific temperament, liberty, responsibility, pluralism, equality, justice. These are very important. Yes or no? Right? Do you agree what I'm saying? No, see, because suppose you could be a very high learner, you will be a high degree scorer. But if at the spur of the moment you go out and you are angry with something and you just break all the public property, you burn a bus, public bus, these things keep happening. 
because maybe and enough emphasis is not given in the you know ethical you know participation ethical practices of human being which is most important we need high score or fine to run companies and other things but to run a society ekhon hustho khomas hobol khomas kintu eibur bostu ehe rakhibo e je to shraddha amar saupakhor bostur proti je to amar সামগ্রিক জীবন যাত্রার প্রতি ইজনে সিজনের প্রতি যে পারস্পরিক শ্রদ্ধা পাবলিক যে রাজহা সম্পত্তি হোক প্লুরালিজম যে ডাইভার্সিটি আছে আমার মাজত নানা জাতি জনজাতি উপজাতি নানা সংস্কৃতি আছে সকল এই প্লুরালিজম বলে কয় সে ইকুয়ালিটি সমতা জাস্টিস ন্যায় প্রেরণা দিস আর আই থিং ভেরি ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট স্পিরিট এন্ড দিস ইজ আ পার্ট অফ দোজ হোল ফান্ডামেন্টাল ভিশন এন্ড প্রিন্সিপাল then again coming back to multilingualism and power of language in teaching and learning this again i i find personally very interesting because one power language is there of course but since india is a multilingual you know uh, cultural space you have so many languages and each language is so powerful we know assamese language so powerful i literally productions are being being we have a very great vibrant assembly literature so multilingualism practice of multilingualism bringing in those multilingual aspects will actually make it a great you know site of learning then of course life skill as communication cooperation team of resilience that resilience that is also another important point i'll go quickly actually i can see the time is running by and then uh, you have extensive technology in teaching and learning so that no physically the young student as you can read physically you know this um, challenged or i mean specially able people can also do and then respect for diversity and respect for local context in all curriculum that again is important what actually they are trying to do they are saying that there should be a disconnect just to make it simple we are reading here this is one institutions in assam but then we if we keep talking about some theories and practices which are in the you know some other part of the globe and even not contextualizing it in the local context then the learning is half learning there is no you know implication so these are many 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 you know new uh, points the school education i i'm skipping that part is light and tight regulatory framework to ensure integrity transparency these are a few points outstanding research the the most important point which is you know important for us as students of art is i have highlighted it in red and pink is our rootedness and pride in india it's a diverse ancient modern culture so these are the some uh, point then coming to the particular section where net 2020 emphasizes about these we are excited about as students of you know fine arts so in page 53 as i said it is a document of 60 pages is it is available in the net it is available in many uh, you know uh, government website please go through it if you come across page number 53 and in the uh, clause uh, or section 22.9 it talks about the most important aspect from the point of view of art to enable the above higher education institutions shall have strong department remember strong department with adequate expertise in design program in indian languages computer literature creative writing art whatever is related to art i have highlighted it in red please read it philosophy archaeology you can find art and museum administration artifact conservation graphic design academic program will be launched in this discipline including a uh, you know four year ba dual degrees these programs are needed to preserve and promote indians art and culture conserve artifact develop highly qualified individual to curate and run a museum and heritage scholarship for people of all ages to study and promote indian language art and culture with local masters and within higher education system. and another important point is they are also thinking about you know artist in residence to expose students to art and creativity so this is very important you know section or clause for us then we have creating such program in higher education across art language and humanities will come up with extended high quality opportunities for employment that can make effective use of this qualification so there are already hundreds of academic museum 
art galleries and heritage site in dire need of qualified individual for their effective functioning. This again is from page 53. This is very important because positions are to be filled with suitably qualified candidate. At least they are trying to understand or they have at least, you know, accepted this particular fact which was neglected for long that there is a need for conservation, additional museum, galleries, heritage site. And us as a student of art and heritage studies can contribute a lot. So again, department, they are putting emphasis on establishing, opening up you new know, department in languages, literature, translation again, I, I really find it very interesting, music, philosophy, indology, and art, then theater education. This, everything comes within the broader fold of art and then of course, fine art. So at all higher learning institutions. So a holistic and multidisciplinary education will would aim to develop all capacities of human being, both intellectual, aesthetic. I have again highlighted this with red, because intellectual, physical, you know, it's getting worse. Car. We, we keep, uh, you know, talking about it, but aesthetic is one word that was lacking, and they have incorporated at least. I think the vision is there. We'll come to the practical implementation. That's a different story, but at least that has been incorporated with the draft. So that is one good beginning or a starting point, like right? the emotional point. So now I'm coming to the, this is the setup. This is the premise. Okay. We are happy that there is a art education, but then we need to talk about, we as students or scholars of art, we know, but what about the common people? How to convince or how to understand that? Why art? Why? You know, new education policy talks about art and art education. What is its relevance? That is our, our trust of this discussion. That why? Why you think this is significant? Why you need to do that? Why only very few institutions of India like Baroda or Shanti Niketan or, you know, Fine Arts, um, Fine Arts College, Art College of Delhi, such, you know, Kerala and, you know, of course, in Assam also we, have, we are having this. So I'm coming to the art education part and its relevance. Please remember there are two ways, in fact, four ways, but broadly two things. One is as a pedagogic tool and as a profession. One can be a professional in art, but despite that, one can also use it, art as a tool. If one is, if you follow the multidisciplinary, you know, approach that the new education policy is aiming at. So these are the few bullet points that I have made, please go through it. Art as an academic discipline and profession, art as a pedagogic tool or a medium for pedagogy or andragogy for the higher education, imparting education. And then art as a tool to enhance creativity. This is mostly applicable for school students. Those of you who will go out and join schools and high, you know, higher secondaries and colleges, you will know if for you, these are very important point that art is a tool to enhance creativity, analytical ability, critical and abstract thinking, right? Because abstract, the whole entire process of art making is abstract actually. Problem solving problem, mental and cognitive capability. And then also finally, art is a means of holistic personality development. Art has a therapeutic meaning, which recently people have realized a lot. And now art is a therapy, both art, fine art, painting and other, you know, allied expressions along with music have been used in medical profession and other areas in handling trauma and affecting a mental well-being. So during the pandemic, a lot of research has been done. So we know as a profession and academic engagement, uh, these degrees, we know, I, I'm sure all of you, your, your professors are telling you, I'm sure of this department that you have painting, sculpture, printmaking, pottery, all this you have here, you can have your independent you know, engagement as a prof uh, the profession along with it if you th these are all practice based you know degrees but you also have theory based degree like UGPG and doctoral degree in art history and history which I did from Baruda after my one master's from in philosophy so this is one engagement now coming to the pedagogy so now I I'm I'm, I'm not saying it just for the heck of it I have you know if you say if you put forward an argument you need proper substantiation so these are two citations i have taken from through project global project see the first one is the ahrc cultural bello project and these are these were done in uk very recently two years back so 
the finding of the project was that art in education has been shown to contribute in important ways to the factor that underpin learning such as cognitive ability confidence motivation problem solving and communication skill understanding the value of art and culture this is a research finding this is not something we are saying just like it okay etiaba ami eni kisuman kotha je koi diu tene ke kwa no hoy eta proper gobekhonar adharot prokrito gobekhonar adharot jikhini poa goise tar uporot ami tar uporot hi kotha khongkhepe kwa hoyse and the other point is the royal european doing art and australian education another australian council for educational research it educational research or the project tar finding hoyse to define art is also to define creativity and imagination art mane creativity art mane imagination creative individual are constantly curious highly motivated willing to take a risk ar ene dhoronor manuhor nirman srishti korat sahay kore kone arte ba kolar jitu shikkhar ar adhare so engagement in art making and art appreciation enhances mental and cognitive ability e ene dhoronor gobekhona bilake ei kotha uli aise into all way bila important finding hoy se whenever an art is created by an artist or examined by a spectator two important activities happen duta aro kotha ho ki hoy decision making and problem solving yes because when you make art when you create art you have to take your own decision and this is independent this is individual it is not something out there which is kept and you just read it and like a parrot and note it down when you are creating your own art you are the decision maker you are solving a problem you don't know how to you are finding it you are struggling with it and after a struggle isn't it i'm sure if you have created art you have faced it and finally you have arrived it forget about whether it is you know ground breaking or great forget about it but you constantly there is a kind of negotiation in your brain and you do that it is so helpful from the psychoanalytic point of view also and then artistic creation involves the exploration of open ended problem as it has no right answer but it is very interesting every drawing every sculpture and every work you create you try to solve the problem involving in clarifying interpreting and communicating what is important to me so critical examination these are very important part another more practical reason is that the reason express more and more which is, and nowadays all the workplaces industries people in hr they are trying to you know incorporate all this activity related with art because it they have understood that uh, the art helps them to build ideas and nurture a mind for original idea to take hold and grow so again art in focus there's a uh, it, it came out mitler's book it came out in 2006 in that book it talks about that an art education nourishes an appreciation of differing point of view flexible thinking and self discipline further it helps us to recognize the importance of collaboration and teamwork which is key to in all organization whether it is from science and technology commerce everything this collaboration and teamwork interesting is enhanced by art practice art experience can help you to become a decision maker problem solver as we had other findings is also pointed it out and an imaginative and creative thinker these are precisely precisely the kind of skill and business value today this is said by mitla the skills explain why an art education is now generally regarded as basic and vital vital this is very important it is regarded as now basic it is not something which is for time pass you know usually in schools what we used to have we had a you know class which is assigned for you know art and then the teacher will come and draw a mango and the board and say that am a kasu time pass and sometimes they will say okay let's go and play outside because that importance was not given jene tane ame ta akibo hikale aru khona aki thaka dekhon kon kholokot ase sai sai aki se or they go out and then they play but now they say that the understanding has come up through research that it is basic and right so whether you become a art professional or not it will ultimately help in your you know form uh, personality build up process and also your mental well being that is why it has become and it is going to implicate in long run so these are the list of you know projects uh, research report about impact of art on education i have so many i don't have time to read out everything but these are done to last decade and see so many these are all global and interestingly if you go down and read you will see that neuroeducation learning these are all from you know uh, 
John Hopkins Research Center. These are all science. Science research center. This has this, this. This is not coming from any humanities or art. Most of the uh, you know project that have been done are from. If you read it, they are mostly from you know uh, science. Again, I'm bringing in some constructivist and connectivist literature. These are educational theories. I'm not going into it because you're in college level, so I'll I leave it. I'm not going to elaborate on that. Again, it will take time. But I have just pointed out. Then visual literacy is becoming an essential tool in the current situation. Yes or no? Think about the main culture. Think about the, the whole mode of process. You know, communication has become so we don't even realize it. But what is good about you know art education? What is good about art? Because it challenges textual hegemony. It creates a different, it breaks language may create barrier, but art breaks it. We know it. So you can communicate with art. Even if you are physically you know, challenged, you can create with art. So education and pedagogy, it creates a creative faculty for reflexivity, meditation, aesthetic epistemon, finer sensibility. Most importantly, it makes art human. So I'll just give you one example. For example, how it helps as a pedagogic tool. So you know about this full French Revolution. A history teacher would give you pages after pages, go on giving long, which is important, which he cannot do. He cannot, you know, he has to do it. But if you go on continuously describing the piece, the student at a certain point you may find it little, you know, distracting, or the loss of attention. But when we use art as a pedagogy, what do we use? If we take this painting, the Liberty leading the people by uh, Eugene Delacroix. So this is the you know metaphor of uh, liberty as a woman, and then all the protagonists, all the characters you see in and around, they are a beautiful, poignant depiction of all the classes that have taken part. One is from the working class, one is from the you know lower middle class, one is from the soldiers who had taken part, one are the you know high class, this boy, which are you know uh, which is raising his hand. This is from a uh, you know student like you all, which has taken part. Who they were actually aristocratic and elite people. So one single painting tells you all. So it is it, it is also a very important. I just quickly given one example. Time is already running out. I see only five minutes are left. So multimedia art form the last space for diversity avenue for physically challenged. I have already said that in my own class I have used PowerPoint using painting and I could see that one person who was you no. Know, who couldn't you know hear hearing impaired he benefited a lot he has given me his on record his you know feedback then it bridges the gap of theory and practice classroom becomes you know things go beyond classroom and in most importantly you know create social outreach when you do posters you make posters we have been doing it for gender you know sensitization we make posters i am sure all of you have been doing it for example other art forms street play and all this so multiple outcome comes from out of this pedagogical methodology. Then, then you have renewed, you know, concentration, refreshing. So art is a holistic personality. I have only one or two slides. I'm finishing it off. So art is a means of holistic personality development as a therapeutic mean of trauma that again has come up. So nowadays people are, you know, recruiting. You know, these are some examples what had happened. I mean, how art helped. Recruiting people from area of art, it has happened in a way. In India, it hasn't happened, but I'm sure after 10 years, maybe this will happen in India also. And if not, maybe even five years. So in health center, healthcare centers or in a trauma center, rehabilitation centers, they appoint people who are engaged because by drawing, they are asked to do certain kind of exercise. They can channelize. They do not want to be big artists, but what they do through art. The art might not be, you know, Picasso or Van Gogh. Nobody is aiming at the thing is they want to use it as a catharsis, healing. So we can set up our hill peak and hoy at a Tinepathana trauma center that are going to our Akise. Brilla Halta Bihon to Tor Kalin Purisit Mother is a Tarma Zudita. So we can give Lia is a release to mother. Eco Hakini as a hill peak, but an art drink. Degree holder. Then he comes to enhance school. But I believe it is more important for you guys. Europe, Hawaii, America, Bahrain, and all. Did you see, man? So, a kathabila koi to manot thabi new education policy. A dhar onor kathabila kor guru tar kori se. So there is a widespread use of art and cultural intervention to help peace building and healing after armed conflict. Pithi bit conflict hoye ase. This world is pithi noit conflict all the time. 
আমি যিমানে যি নহওক কনফ্লিক্ট আহিছে যায় ট্রমা হয়ে আছে ইটস আ পার্ট অফ হিউম্যান হিস্ট্রি এন্ড দেন অলসো উই হিল সো হাউ হিলিং ইজ পসিবল দ্য মোস্ট এসেনশিয়াল থিং অফ হিলিং ইজ অল দিস কাইন্ড অফ কালচারাল এক্সপ্রেশন ফাইন আর্টিস্টিক এক্সপ্রেশন লিটারি এক্সপ্রেশন দিস ইজ আর্ট দ্যাট ইজ ওয়াই ইউ শুড রিমেম্বার প্রায়ে কোয়া হয় নহয় সাইন্স ফাংশনাল আর্টসর কি বা ইমান ফাংশনাল ভ্যালু আছে জানো সায়েন্সে টুথপেস্ট বনালে সায়েন্সে ইলেকট্রিক বাল্ব বনালে কিন্তু পেন্ডেমিকর সময়তে আমি গম পাই গেল উই রিয়েলাইজ ইন পেন্ডেমিক যে আনকি ডক্টরজনেও সেই আমার রোগীসল চাই চাই তার মাজতেই কিন্তু মন ওয়াক মাইকেল জ্যাকসনের করে দিছে শিলচর সেই ডক্টরজনের ভিডিওটো ভাইরেল হয়ে গেল দেখিছেনে বারো দেখিছানে তোমালকে বিচারিলে পাবা বহুতো বহুতো আমি দেখা পাইছো চিকিৎসক হল আমার যখন একদম ফ্রন্ট লাইন ভেরিয়ার আসিল কোভিডের সিটুয়েশনেও দেখিছো কিন্তু উশাহ অকমান পাবলে কি করেছে এই আর্টর আশ্রয় লোসে কোনোবাই ছবি এঁকেছে কোনোবাই গান গাইছে কোনোবাই নাচিছে সেই বেলকনিখনের কথাটো আমি এই দৃশ্যটা কেউ পাহরব নয় কেউ পাহর নয় ভাবিলে এটাও যার গতি রাগে গুজ বাম দেন হিউয়েন ইট ওয়াজ ইন দ্য হাই টাইম ইন ইটালি এন্ড সাডেনলি ওয়ান আর্টিস্ট কামজ আপ এন্ড stands on the balcony and you know starts playing the violin and one by one see i'm still getting goosebumps one by one people come to the balcony they all stand in you know in commotion and listen to you know so kupani ulais war dore eta he muhurto he muhurto bilake asolte koi diye the art is functional kola obihone kola obihone jibon nirartha functionality to jibon to diye thake জীবনের অর্থ যদি অস্তিত্ব জনিত এক্সিস্টেন্সিয়াল যদি অর্থ সে কিন্তু কলাই দিয়ে গতি কলা এই গুরুত্বটা আমি সদায় বুঝি রাইট সো আই উল বি গোয়িং টু দ্য মাই ফাইনেল স্লাইড বিকজ ইট ইজ ফিফটি নাইন এন্ড আই থ্যাঙ্ক গড আই হ্যাভ বিন এবল টু ফিনিশ ইট উইথ ইন টাইম সো নেট টুয়েন্টি টুয়েন্টি ইজ এ ওয়ে টু লুক ফরওয়ার্ড উইথ এডেড এমফেসিস অন আর্ট এন্ড কালচার The NAEP, New Education Policy 2020, after a gap of 34 years, has put in place a skew of educational reforms in both the higher and school sector. It intends to bring a systematic reform in education sector rather than in incremental form. So, it is the first education policy of 21st century and aims to address our country's current development and imperative. So, what are these imperatives? That we have to... be you know in the digital arena in the air you know changing scenario of the global you know communication ai and all and then also at the same time looking back and understanding the you know uh, importance and significance of you know uh, our glorious uh, glorious past our you know recreating an understanding about uh, being indian that is the main trust that respect culture respect heritage and the moment we talk about respect culture heritage all these thing which is one of the principle then we have to remember that as student of art what are we doing we are continuing of course we are doing modernist practice but it is still a continuation because while doing art we also discuss i am sure department in your department also you do it or in my department this is our cultural studies department but within that whatever courses i have developed in that i have incorporated the folk art the tribal art because these are our intangible and tangible heritage so art is a career of that bearer of that so true art true pedagogy true learning both history and practice because if you want to be an artist only do knowing the skill is not enough you should also know where do you stand what is your history what had happened in prehistoric cave painting to here from a sum if you are from a sum you should know what is puti chitra you should know bali khotra he chitra bhagavatar onupam rup varnana ami janibo na he khini na jana ke ene sobi ekhon to aki thakile no hobo ei harbangin ji to understanding about you know culture to it is so intricated iman ekat ekangi hoy ase kotha ke so he to he to asol kotha he to got ke nep pe new education policy ekhini koise আমি আশা করেছো উই আর অল স্টেক হোল্ডার উই এজ এডুকেটার ইউ এজ লার্নার আর কাইলে পড়লে তোমালোক এডুকেটর হয়ে যায় এডুকেটর মানে অনলি এডুকেশন সেক্টরটা জয়েন করাটা নবুঝায় ইভিন ইফ ইউ মে জয়েন এ স্টুডিও বি এফ এক্স স্টুডিও ইউ মে বি ভেরি এক্সপার্ট বাট ইন ইউর মাইন্ড ইউল বি ইউজিং ইউর মিথলজিক্যাল কেরেক্টার্স রাইট সো মেনি এইটো ইন্টারেস্টিং এভিনিউ কথা পাতি গিয়ে থাকবো গতি সেই কথাখিনি মনত রাখি আই রিকুয়েস্ট অল অফ ইউ টু গো এহেড এন্ড আই উইল হপফুলি ইউ নো লুক ফরওয়ার্ড 
that what might happen. There are interesting formulations in the draft. Let us see its implementation and I hope that something positive will come out, at least in the field of art and culture. So thank you once again for inviting me. I hope this was, uh, you know, helpful to some extent. It is not possible to tell everything within, you know, one hour, but I have tried my best. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. Wonderful talk, ma'am. Today is uh, presenting of NEP 11 Art and Education. So I'm very much very thank you. So, thank you so much, ma'am. So, anybody to questioning from uh, any relevant art education of NEP 2021? Anybody? Amar hato thobar kuch kam. Jodi kuna kiba Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, ma'am. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, can I ask something? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, ma'am, I, I have been listening to you uh, that you mm. have beautifully um, uh, deliberated that art is functional. Uh, mm. Rather, only science can do. But you have uh, shown the facets of art uh, during this uh, COVID pandemic situation, very, very uh, nicely, ma'am. So thank you for this. And actually, uh, ma'am, I was going through that uh, you have shown one painting. Uh, it mm. is titled as Liberty Leading the People, yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, which shows the visual representation and the implication of uh, uh, especially the form, form which yeah. have been used there. Mm -hmm. And uh, ma'am, uh, if we see, it's my uh, uh small suggestion or um, appeal you can say that mm. uh, if we want to promote art especially in the rural areas which are mm. not yet very much affluent uh, in the field of art and uh, uh, aesthetic so if the regular workshops orientation programs with some indigenous materials it's by accumulating course. local yes. artists uh, who yes. can uh, who who may be trained or untrained irrespective of, irrespective of uh, training or any other formal training uh, but uh, if in the college or school level apart from mm -hmm. general studies uh, mm -hmm. to avoid the student about the aesthetical temperament and uh, mm -hmm. the need to explore themselves uh, with uh, some art uh, by constructing some art forums or committees by their um, by maintaining some fundamentalities i think that would be very much appealing and it would encourage the upcoming artist very much from the uh, from the very uh, beginning to the school level, ma'am. Yes, yes. So, Actually, this is a yes. wonderful uh, suggestion, which also you know, we have been talking a lot about because of the time constraint, I couldn't cover everything. But yes, yes this is one uh, you know wonderful step that we can take actually. And the example given was like that is from the Western, right? Because uh, in our school uh, curriculum, uh, French Revolution history, especially the history students in the college, you no, know, they learn about all this. So that was, example was given. But yes, all the indigenous, and that is very important, all the indigenous art forms that we have. As I have already said that in Tejpur University, I have developed on where I use folk and tribal art. I have been using, you know, uh, from Northwest also. So these are the important things what we can do, because that will al uh, allow two things. No, one is the awareness about our own past and tradition and the respect that we need to give them, these artists, right? And then also through it as the educational tool, it will spread others. As I have again given one example that gender discrimination. You use painting to put it, use the indigenous form so that people feel more, you know, maybe the Western language might not be easy for it. It would be easy for the master's level or post graduation level or you know, graduation level to certain extent. All schools level. Use a simple, you know, indigenous methodology, indigenous examples to put forward. Yes, this can be done. And these things need to be, you know, followed up at various levels. And this can be done by institutions. Very good suggestion. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, you. you ma'am. Our uh, <coughs> Google may got messenger uh, feedback from DOS. So feedback from submit curable and put it on the curve. Uh, and put it on online to get certificate from the top. Thank you, ma'am. What is it? Okay. So the meeting is over? Yes, my meeting is over. Okay, thank you. Okay. Welcome. Have a nice day, everyone. Okay. Thank you.
Oh, kati dia. Thank <laughs> you. 